Hey everybody and welcome to the inaugural debuting episode of Why We're Not Writers. I'm Sean King joined by Vinny Herman, Vin the Human as we like to call him. I uh, I have no such cool nickname. Uh, I we'll, just we'll figure you out. Yeah, I just like to trade on my good looks. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you're wondering what this is all about, uh, we've decided that we want to take television series uh, that neither one of us has seen, and we're going to watch the first episode and the last episode. And for your entertainment or possibly information, we are going to piece together what happens throughout the entire series. Now that could be. One season, it could be 10 seasons, it could be eight seasons, as it is this week with our pick, Dexter. Yes. Big old popular show. It is incredibly popular, and we, and neither one of us had seen it. Shame on us. Shame on us. (laughs) Uh, Before we start, though, we want to give a quick shout out here. Be sure to check out our new, our uh, nerd news page, Sort of My Comics on Facebook, and Follow sort of my podcast on Instagram. Be sure to check out Subject to Change Entertainment on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe on YouTube and SoundCloud. And you're checking this out somewhere while you're here. Why not like, comment, and share? You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Share. Please. Because sharing is caring. <laughs> no, as really, they answer, as they say. <laughs> as they say. We have a couple sponsors we're going to talk about a little bit later on throughout the show and everything. So we want to give a big shout out to them. Big round of applause. Yay, Yay sponsors. sponsors. Yeah, all Somebody's right. Gotta pay for this. Somebody's got to pay for this. That's right. And uh, <laughs> wait now. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> we can come up with some of them, but we're not going to. So, anyway, so this show, Dexter, an amazing show. I was thoroughly entertained by just the first and the last episode. Uh, yeah. It, like, I really felt like I had already seen the show. And yeah. I was and emotionally it, invested. And I, I I definitely want to go back and watch some more. Uh, mm-hmm. We had spoken off the air a little bit about, um, as, as, it, as is true with a lot of new series, the first episode was a little clunkily written. Yeah. Uh, but understandably so, because they're trying to establish characters. And right. I get that. And uh, but the premise is amazing. You have a <laughs> yeah. forensic blood spatter expert in Dexter Morgan, who uh, works for the Miami Police Department, and who also happens to be <laughs> a serial killer. <laughs> and now the uh, the thing I love is that he ha- it seems like he has this moral center. Where yes, he's not, he, he's not just a serial killer. He is a serial killer. Of bad people. Yes, yeah, he's with a purpose. You could almost yeah. consider him a little bit of a hero, a yeah, little yeah, bit an anti-hero. Yeah, he anti-hero. An anti-hero. Yeah, sure. and uh, uh, yeah, he's 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 not he's kind of Deadpool without the <laughs> without the costume. Everybody's no, I'm just kidding. Got to be dead. Everybody's got to be Deadpool. No, I'm just kidding. So he's <laughs> no. It's a really interesting premise. He is an anti-hero in the sense that he. Uh, he, he believes in justice yeah. for, uh, but, but, and I hate to use the word executing it his own way. <laughs> right. And right. so you're immediately taken in, in the first episode with uh, this premise by him being, by him taking a choir, a boys choir director. Yeah. And. Um, uh, Dexter Morgan. Yes. This or, is, no, I'm sorry. Well, Dexter uh, Morgan Mike was. Mike Donovan uh, is the. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he he takes he takes this guy and uh, we're talking probably in the first ten minutes of the show. Yeah, he he he, I don't know, just sort of applies his own form of justice to this guy in in one of the most gruesome ways. I thought it was like it was it was so sadistic the way that he had dug up the boys that this choir instructor had murdered himself yes in order to show him what he had done yeah before murdering and dismembering him himself which i think makes sense i mean you you would want i mean you're not just gonna go kill the guy willy-nilly and have right. him going well gosh i wonder why this happening to me this guy was a bad dude yeah you know yeah, and yeah. so there was there's no doubt about this and 
it's really sort of interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more as we go along. We're introduced to several characters. We're introduced to Deborah Morgan, his mm-hmm. foster sister. Oh, and I have, I'm sorry. I need to go back just a little bit. Dexter is, uh, uh, his parents died when he was young, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I believe and, that's what they said. Yeah. So he was in a foster family. His foster father, uh, Harry, was a cop with Miami Police Department. Mm-hmm. His foster sister, Deborah is a cop in Vice. Which adds a whole other element to oh, the fact yeah. that he is a murderer himself. Yes. Yeah. And was and of course we're introduced to Deborah because and I had to mention this, she works in Vice only because we're introduced to Deborah and she's dressed like a hoe. I mean, oh, she yeah. she definitely hoed up. <laughs> I mean, it, it took me a minute to figure out like what was going on uh, until they said vice. I was right. like, so his his sister's a hooker. Yeah. So. <laughs> At least I mean, then again, it might be her part time job. We don't know, but yeah, you know, she uh uh, and she's extremely foul mouth. She got a mouth like a sailor oh, on her. Yeah. And uh, a mouth for Showtime. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is oh yeah, we should mention that too. This is a Showtime show. This was not. Like something you would see on uh, NBC or you know Family Family Night Fridays on on no. CBS or anything like that. This is a Showtime show, and the dialogue and the cinematography and the all all reflect that. So much of the cinematography so in much this of the first episode specifically. Yes, yeah. we're also introduced to Sergeant Dokes, the asshole <laughs> uh, police sergeant who, for no other reason, uh, for for no reason established in the first episode. Hates Dexter, thinks yeah. he's weird, and 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 loves cussing him out. I he mean, knows <laughs> something's up there. Yeah, yeah. he knows. He, he, you know, he call, you know, he's just weird. We get uh, uh, Lieutenant Laguerta, the flirtish police lieutenant. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, uh, and she's, you know, and one thing I should have done here is, uh, and and I apologize to our listeners, uh, our longtime listeners, uh, that uh, oh, the illustrious ten, uh, yeah, <laughs> the illustrious <laughs> ten, right? Well, let's. Let's not pat ourselves. On. Let's go with like seven for now. And uh, I'm already working on a t-shirt. You're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can have our own t-shirts. Man. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, Lieutenant LaGuerta is uh, a beautiful uh, a woman who likes to flirt with uh, uh, with Dexter. Dexter doesn't understand this. Dexter doesn't get yeah. the whole flirtatious thing. Well, he understand he understands it in uh, in the sense that he knows why people do. It. Yeah, right, he, right. He makes a point of uh, pointing that out, but to him, he thinks it's undignified. It's like, yeah. it's just a mess. Well, and he doesn't really. Well, the flirtatious thing he says he doesn't really quite get why people do it. Now mm-hmm. I know where you're going, and I could see, I could, I could feel you leading me down this road. Yeah, yeah. Dexter doesn't understand sex. He no. doesn't get it. He doesn't get why people do it. Uh, he doesn't have any. Sexual drive of his own, Until which we'll, a well later. right, well, we'll get there. Well, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, but he's 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 so emotionally disconnected, not just from what he does in the interest of justice, but from the entire world. He's just completely disconnected, and uh, uh, but he plays well. Now he, like in his normal social interactions, you wouldn't necessarily know that he is the perfect sociopath oh yeah yeah he really is yeah when you look at the definition of sociopath he's right there i mean yeah. it's like his pictures there in the uh in the dictionary and you can hear it in how deadpan his uh voiceovers are his yes. internal monologue and everything in his private moments but then when he's out there amongst people he's like the nicest guy he's like he gets <laughs> along with everyone he interacts he brings donuts perfectly. He oh, brings yeah. donuts to the other cops. The no, no cliche station. play there, but yes, he brings <laughs> he brings donuts oh, to the cops. His fun little flirtatious back and forth with the uh, record the, keeper. Yes, the record keeper. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was actually pretty smooth. That was like butter. Yeah, you know what that was? That was as smooth butter. as glaze on a donut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is why we want to pay this guy the big bucks. That's right. So we uh, so <laughs> we're also introduced to Detective Angel Batista. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's uh, he's a Hispanic dude and adds just enough Spanish dialogue uh, to be annoying. And uh, uh, I I just like wow, can we cliche this guy up anymore? He would you know. like I mean even, even removing his uh, ethnicity from it, he's yeah. just an annoying he character. Is. Yeah, he is. And then uh, of course Harry Morgan. Uh, we talked about him very briefly. That's the foster dad. Mm-hmm. Now for me, uh, anybody who's a, uh, a, a a fan of Mash 
or um oh shoot uh what was it dun, 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 uh the show oh god i know what that yeah was. so <laughs> harry morgan was colonel potter and mash yeah and uh but totally different people so this is what we're introduced to in the first episode mm. now fast forwarding a little bit a tiny bit now eight <laughs> seasons later and by the way, this show won Emmys, and you know, I mean, this was oh, a good show. Oh, it was show. a wildly popular yeah. show. Like, everyone was talking about this. Right. I can't tell you how many times people have berated me, because I haven't watched it yet. It's kind of like me and, uh, like, not ever having seen uh, Goonies. Everybody's like, you haven't seen Dexter? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know? You, I mean, the Dexter I know Goonies. is, like, he's in a laboratory, he's really yeah. short, he wears glasses, he's got a sister, and his mom is pretty hot for an, you know, for a cartoon. That's the Dexter I know. <laughs> yeah, but that's if, the Dexter I grew up. That's right. Omelet du fromage. I don't really like this <laughs> television uh, interpretation of the character, <laughs> but right. you know, if you remove the source material, yes, exactly. <laughs> so now we fast forward to the very last episode, and we're introduced to a couple of new characters that we hadn't seen before. Uh, Jacob Elway. Yes. Now they referred to him as Elway all the way through, and I have to say, not the quarterback. I was pretty disappointed it wasn't John Elway. Would have been a way different uh, season finale, or I, series finale. I think so. I think so. And of course, he was played by Sean Patrick Flannery of Boondock Saints fame. Yes. And uh, so it was weird to see him not with an Irish accent because that's how I know the guy, you know. <laughs> and uh, then you have Harrison, who is Dexter's son. Yep. Uh, oh, adorable I'm sorry. Kid. I, yeah, can't act for shit. But yeah, adorable. can't act for shit. And uh, I need to back up just a little bit. Somebody I failed to mention from their first episode was uh, Dexter's damaged girlfriend. Yes, Rita. yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, and and there's a reason why I went back to that and why I was reminded of that. She plays a big part in that episode. She does. She plays a huge part in that episode, and we'll talk about that here in just a second as soon as we get done with our, our characters here. Um, but uh, you have Han- uh, uh, now going back forward. You have Hannah, who. As best I can tell, is a girlfriend, uh, yeah, not I'd, I'd Harrison's little, mother. Yeah, I'd say a little more than just a girlfriend because they obviously love each other. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, as far as far as like official status, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they're engaged. I don't know. We don't know that because uh, because we did we skipped the recap too. We'll figure and that the, out personally. Later. That's right. <laughs> and uh, we also uh, one other uh, character we need to uh, that I feel is. Uh, 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 necessary to uh, uh, mention is uh, Laura, uh, who was a uh, hurricane, and uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and only because, interestingly enough, plays plays a major factor in the last episode. Yeah, and and so uh, I'm trying to th- if you can think of any other characters that uh, I've missed. Oliver Saxton, Saxton, the Sa- uh, uh, the I I I think he might be a murderer as oh, well. Oh, Saxton, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, for, I did forget about him. Yeah, Saxon yeah. in the last episode. Um, Seems man. to be Dexter's rival of some yes. sort. Yeah. Uh, and we pick up in that episode with uh, Deb having been shot by yes. Saxon. And now Saxon is out there trying to find her to finish the job. Yes. And uh, Saxon was, was uh, he looks he looks like that type of guy that lives next door and you would... Not like a frumpy type neighbor or anything like that, but you know, good looking. He, he looks like he could be like a banker or something. You know, yeah. put him in a suit. He looks like a banker and everything. Not somebody you would expect. Very to unassuming. Be, guy. Yes, yeah, yeah, to be to be a killer. So, so there we have. So in the first episode, they're setting the stage for who Dexter is uh, and the people around him and what he does. I mean, that's you would expect that out of a first episode. If you need to knock out an origin story right away. I think they, they there's your first yeah, yeah there's your first fifty minutes of of TV right there. <laughs> um, it's uh, uh, I think it's a terrific origin story. Mm-hmm. I will say, just watching the first episode before I watched the last episode, I was so tempted to watch the second. It really because does. it does draw you it in. It does. It draws you in. Uh, I I can't wait to actually like. Fill in the blanks for real on this thing. <laughs> We're gonna have so many like. Okay, so did you want? Uh, you're not gonna. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's and, the point of the show. Yeah, right? well, yeah. So, uh, great characters. I think. I think all the actors that are involved in it and everything are are, are good. Um, they uh, they uh, ra- they range from passable to good. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, the Harrison kid. Uh, uh, yeah, didn't like that at all, yeah. and uh, it kind of reminded me a little bit of. Uh, you know, the kid they got up for Anakin Skywalker. And the first, I hated that kid, but 
That's, I, I hate that kid. Was, it's I was, working. Yeah, I was ten when that movie. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was, I, I think it annoyed more adults than anything else. Yeah. Kind of like Jar Jar Binks. And, uh, uh, but, uh, so there you have it. So the first episode, we see him, we, we the story establishes Dexter as a, uh, uh, an employee with the forensics department of the Miami police department. Uh, he's a serial killer with a mission of good, at least as he said this. And, and this is how he sees the best way, at least in his mind of, bringing people to justice, you know. Um, yeah. And it's also, it also seems to be something that his foster dad taught him because they yeah. show the flashbacks. His yeah. foster dad teaches him how to cover his tracks yeah. and how to focus it because he starts like any typical uh, serial killer killing animals. Yeah. And yeah. It, they thought it had went away. His foster dad catches him having done it again and decides like, okay, I'm going to help him focus this and it, they focus it on murders did it seem at all odd that first flashback when he started talking about the uh they found the dog in the backyard and everything yeah. and the it, it, the first thing that struck me about that whole conversation is dad is not shocked or upset by this in any way that he's could just be like a comment on the acting or yeah <laughs> he kind of saw it coming yeah and i think that's probably what it was was it was he just I, i'd like to i'd like to think anyway and anyway, we may find out later on uh that uh that he uh didn't that i mean that he's not shocked by it at all and yeah. so now he just sees that he needs to like you said help him sort of direct that energy. Yeah. And uh, and I got the sense, now I'm going to fast forward again to the last episode. I got the sense that Deb knew his sister, mm. eventually found out, because he does mention when you found out who yeah, I am. in the last episode, it's very clear that she knows what's been going on. And I suspect that she participated in a lot of it, too, mm. as the show went on, because of her comments uh, to... Um, her boyfriend, um, yeah, uh, in, Troy, yeah, in the ambulance after she got shot. That I've done yeah. a lot of shit that I that I can't, you know, atone for, and all this stuff and everything. And he and the poor guy's like, "It's okay, honey. You're a good person." <laughs> yeah, you don't know, dude, what yeah. she's done. So we're so I get the sense that that developed out. But in that first episode, one of the things that they did was they, uh, they put Dexter in the position of questioning his own expertise of what he learned from his his foster father mm. with these did they establish it was hookers or prostitutes? I'm I believe sorry. It, it can was we say at hookers? least the first one. Yeah. Uh oh we could say whatever. Can we say hookers or or is it more politically correct to say prostitutes? We could say whatever fucking bullshit we like. <laughs> Hashtag female <laughs> professionals. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I know the first one was uh, was a prostitute. Okay, uh, yeah, it definitely. I don't know if it's clear if the second one was right, but it, it, what you're getting at is the in the first episode we're introduced to another murder. Well, we're not so much introduced; <laughs> we're more introduced to his work. Yes, of where he is draining the bodies of these women of every drop of blood. So bizarre. And then dismembering them systematically, almost ritual, uh, ritualistically, yes, and evolving his technique as he goes. And this actually finally gets Dexter excited. It's the first time he gets excited, and he actually kind of manifests it in a sexual manner with his girlfriend Rita later. Right, and it, what was interesting was Rita, who had no interest in sex because of her past with her ex-husband, who, as they say in the story, repeatedly beat her and raped her. Mm -hmm. She had no interest in being touched, which is not an uncommon reaction. Right. Um, and he had no interest in sex. Yeah, and you know, so it worked out great. He, In fact, he says yeah. that it works out great for him. And uh, she... <laughs> and I love that later on, um, he winds up, as he's describing... the uh, and, and, and I love that he used the word artist. The, the to describe the killer that he was now trying to figure out, and when he 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 wound up touching Rita's upper thigh when he was describing the dis, the dismemberment of the victims, yeah, and something in him triggered, and I I think he got a boner for the first time. I'm pretty sure he, he got a boner, <laughs> and he wasn't sure exactly what to do with that. Well, Rita freaked out a little bit and said, uh, "Yeah, no, we're not doing that." But then later on, she recants. 
and says, hey, can you come over? Um, one of those, and all I can think of is, uh, you know, hey, come over. I can't. My parents aren't home. Okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> and uh, so he runs over there, and she says, I want you. I want you, Dexter. And Dexter says, okay. Like, literally, that's all he says. So, okay. uh, yeah, he says it yeah. three times. <laughs> yeah. <in a> row. <laughs> it's like, fantastic. okay. And you know his boner's going, dude, try to get a little more excited <laughs> about this. Pushes him down on the chair, and we think, all right, they are going to bump uglies. And then the phone rings. Rita's kid calls and uh, after throwing up all over the neighbor's couch and uh, uh, and blows the moment. Mm. Just blows the moment. So we don't actually get to see whether or not they actually. Fucking kids. I know. Fucking kids. Damn kids. So, so that's Rita and everything. And then the episode leaves off with um, Dexter having chased an ice truck because they think uh, based on, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the real, like, tiny little bit of details here, but um, they think this, he thinks this ice truck might be involved in the murder somehow and everything, and this ice truck then turns around, drives back, pads it, throws a head against his windshield, which, you know, and he's, like, so completely not freaked out by the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, he's just like, oh, cool, a head. And, uh, just another Tuesday. Just another Tuesday, right. He's like, oh, that ice cream truck, or that ice truck just gave me head. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, and then, you know, that's that's really about it. He's just, yeah. oh, no, no, he's got the, the little doll thingy that's in right. his freezer. Yeah, he's got the doll thing in his yeah. freezer. And, and before he interacts with that, he's talking about how actually making out with Rita oh, yeah, felt yeah. good. Yeah, so, yeah. so we start to see a little bit of character development just in this first episode right. of him like, here's all these things about me that have been standard for all these years of my life. And right. then a couple of things happen, and he, it starts changing him. Yes, bit, yeah. which definitely leads us into the last episode where he is <laughs> he's, as he's, a kid. Yeah. yeah, he has a kid. He's emotionally connected to a variety of people, right. uh, including his sister. Which in the first episode, he remarks on her: "She may be the only person who loves me, and I wish I could feel that way back, right. or something along those lines." Right. Uh, and now, obviously. He does have very strong feelings for her, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I, want, I wonder though about that. It's interesting you say that because I thought the same thing, and then I think it's he probably always had those feelings for Deb, mm-hmm. protective older brother type feelings, but just didn't was just so completely shut down that he didn't Do really you think know. Maybe, like giving in to the murders as a way of. Uh, filling the void he thought was in him yeah. actually suppressed some of these natural feelings yeah. that he thought he just didn't have. Yeah, and you know the yeah. thing is, and uh, this is part of my uh, part of my fill in. And uh, we're we're uh, uh, we're gonna off, get to that. Soon, we're, yeah. We'll get to that. And and bear in mind, this is a uh, this is a brand new concept for the both of us. And yeah. so, if it feels a tiny bit clunky this time, we we apologize ahead of time. We're working. Actually, we apologize of, in the middle of it because we're already in the middle of it. <laughs> we're working off of an idea and yes. one meeting, trying to figure out right. what we want to do with it. Exactly. So. And so, uh, and this, but really, <laughs> and this is yet another reason why we're not writers. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this show is, a, is, is a, an example. This is this is the character development episode of why we're not writers. <laughs> <laughs> Plot, plot so, set down so the whole the nine yards. the show, I'm going to have another kid and a lot of different feelings. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feelings I didn't know I had. What's going yeah. on? Turns out these podcasts have been a way for me to suppress all these feelings I thought I didn't have. <laughs> these feelings are tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> oh, God, that's a whole uh, other one. Yeah, that's all <laughs> uh, Anyways. Okay, so now we've ast- so now in the last episode, and we'll we'll just summarize it very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the last episode, like we talked about, we've got Harrison. We see that that Dexter has a son, Harrison. Uh, he has a different love interest. Let's just pay, say it that way: different yeah. love interest in Hannah. Notice they're both blonde. Uh huh. And uh, Deborah, as you mentioned, gets shot in the beginning of the episode in the stomach. Um, as the episode develops, uh, as we go along. Well, she dies with a little bit of help from Dexter. Yes, um, she goes. Uh, what is it? Is it vegetable or catatonic? Uh, well, 
she would have been in a coma. I don't think she ever came out, so she wouldn't have been a vegetable. Well, they they made that um, mention about her brain function. Yes, and like it, it, they've got breathing tubes to help her breathe. Right, as far as the and brain she's never going to be able to eat on her own. And yeah, because yeah. she had complications. She was conscious and everything, and everything looked positive, as you might guess. Typical sort of cliche thing. Patient, everybody seems positive. Patient takes a turn. Patient dies. And so that's, uh, it's sad because, well, then we won't have foul mouth Deb around anymore. Who, who gets plenty of those foul mouth licks in. Uh, right, in all the way up to the end. Yeah. I mean, that's the best part. She's like, ah, fuck you. Yeah, she uh, seems like such a great character. She does. I can't wait to get to know her more. <laughs> she does. If she does, and, and I know, you know what? We could actually have a Deb fuck drinking game. Oh, like you yeah. said, every time she says fuck, just take a shot. You'll be bombed in the first 10 minutes of the show. I promise you. <laughs> And uh, but uh, yeah, so she dies. Uh, Hannah and Harrison are trying to get away from Elway, get out of the country, get out of the country yeah. to Argentina. Uh, uh, Dexter's uh, uh, first idea in the airport mm-hmm. to create a distraction was rather genius, I thought, in uh, alerting the gate agent that. Elway, who was standing in the in the in the in the, in, the, in the terminal there, but hadn't seen them yet, because he is working with U.S. Marshals yes. to track down Hannah. Yes, specifically. Now and we don't, don't even really know why. We don't. Well, we're gonna figure out. Why. Well, yeah, we're, we're gonna. No, no, we don't know why, but we're gonna say why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, uh, you know, again, sort of uh, uh, synopsizing this. Uh, Hannah gets away uh, with. Uh, Harrison to Argentina. Hmm. Dexter figures out that everything that he loves, he destroys. Yeah. So he actually doesn't follow them. But I love the ending. Yeah. I love the ending because it's 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 a serious finale, and they wrap it up fairly good with everybody except Dexter. Dexter can keep going. Dexter can keep yeah. going, right. And uh, so we'll we'll leave it at that because we don't want to spoil the no, ending too yeah, terribly bad. we don't bad. necessarily want to give away like the juiciest bits. That's of right. I think saying that Deb died was probably the farthest we can Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. But you do see uh, um, uh, there's plenty of skin. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of profanity. This is not something you want to sit down with your 10-year-old and go, hey, it's family fun night. Here's some ice cream and some popcorn. Let's sit around and watch a couple episodes. Don't do that. And no. uh, we are not advocating that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but once they hit 11, that's a whole different ballgame. So, yeah. <laughs> so, now, uh, so now comes the fun part. Now, we've got different uh, sort of uh, takes on this. We have uh, um, how we're going to connect now. The first episode with the last episode. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're going to figure out what happened. Yes. We're what gonna, got us to this what point? What got us to this point? And uh, so, uh, Vinny, I'm going to let you go first. And okay. uh, so, d- connect the dots. <laughs> right. And show us why we're not writers. Well, first <laughs> of all, I, I, I think one of the things that has to happen within the, the first three seasons at least is uh, the detective who thinks something's up with Dex is, is starts catching on a little bit more. Maybe finds uh, his blood uh, plate leak, uh, platelet collection. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the microscope plate. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Sergeant Dokes, he yeah. He collects those as his trophies. Right. Not fingers or heads. He collects blood platelets. Well, they take up a lot less room than fingers or heads. Right. I mean, I'm just saying. So it's... maybe you find something like that and... Maybe this is where Deb makes her big mis- uh, big mistake, the thing she can't take back, because maybe she helps kill this detective and cover it up for Dexter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, because we don't see Dokes in the last episode. That's and then right. this, this brings Dexter towards uh, revealing everything. Like, this is what I've been doing. This right. is why I've been doing it. And maybe that's why Deb leaves the Force, because they do make a mention that she only just recently came back to the Force in the last episode. Right. Uh, right. So maybe this is, uh, she she sticks around the Force for another season, maybe season five she, she bails, 
and uh, and then maybe comes back season six, maybe season seven. Yeah, maybe season. <laughs> seven. Uh, but so I, so I think that's what's going on with uh, with I that detective that. who I can't remember. I wrote down Detective Doug, but you it's, had a it's dip- Dokes. Dokes. D o a k e s. Yes. Uh, maybe that's. What I'm sorry. To- let me let me rephrase it. It's Sergeant Fucking Dokes, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think that's what happens with Deb as well. Uh, Rita is a tough one. Yeah. Rita's a real tough one. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he kills her. No, uh, no. I think that's where your mind would first go. That's where my mind first went. Uh, but I don't think he kills her. Um, but I have no idea what happens to her. So what I'm going to say is that <laughs> uh, she, she got into some trouble. She leaves. Right. At some point. She leaves at some point. Uh, she got into some trouble. She comes back with a different face and a different name under the... So <laughs> now, the so Rita is now Hannah? Rita is <laughs> Hannah. And nice. she, is, she has been relocated and reconstructed and everything. Um, and so I, I feel like that's the correlation there. <laughs> I like it. So, I like it. Um, <laughs> Now, as far as um, Foster's dad, I think the Foster dad and uh, and all that, I think there's going to be some sort of flashback at some point where he sees his dad do something unsavory, whether it's like commit a, uh, commit a small crime or a murder or a theft. I think he kills his foster dad. Well, you know, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thought. And something I forgot to mention earlier. Remember, they mentioned several times, Harry's code. So yeah. there's a code involved somehow. We don't know what that is. Yeah. But because it's not established in the first or mentioned in the last, but there's a code that presumably Dexter is supposed to be applying to choosing his victims. And I don't really say victims because they're all supposed to be bad people, but yeah. you know, that's uh uh yeah, so but that's an interesting thing about killing his dad. Of course he's dead before the first episode yeah, we, starts. We do so, know that yeah, he, he could be gone. one of the first people, yeah. Uh and that would be a big reveal. Yeah. That that could be the season one finale. Is that reveal? And would that make you would with... that make you would that make you well and here's the guess is because we don't really know no, much no. about Harry. Does that make you like Dexter more or hate Dexter more? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It, like I don't know. His own it depends dad. on the way it, it, it depends on the way it plays out because right. if it's a uh if it's a minuscule crime yeah. like maybe he's on the take <laughs> right. or something and Dexter kills Jay him for Walking. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dad, then, you're supposed to cross with the crosswalk. You got to die. <laughs> maybe I would side against Dexter on that one, but right. if he sees that his like dad has been molesting his sister or something. Well, this would be bad. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. then he kills him. Sure. Yeah, I- I'm totally on Dexter's side there. Right. Um. Now, as far as the murderer from episode <coughs> one, yes. I know sh- shows love to bring it all back around towards right. the end. So it's totally possible that Oliver Saxton is um, uh, the murderer from the first season. There you go. Yeah, and maybe he disappears for a while, or maybe Dexter thought he he killed him at some point, right? And uh, and then he resurfaces in like season seven, or just at the beginning of season eight, or whatever. Right. And then it starts this whole cascading thing. Now here's where I get a little fantastical. <laughs> if it's not that, what? if he oh, yeah. doesn't disappear, yeah. then I would like the idea of these guys having. This long-standing battlefield rivalry that takes them everywhere. There's like we start small with like maybe on the open sea or like oh in Russia, and then eventually they go to the moon, and then at some point uh, they travel back to to the days of Jack the Ripper, and it turns out both of them are Jack the Ripper. Nice, yeah. <laughs> But we you know, like going to before the they go to the moon, you get this like flash of Elon Musk Isn't there smoking that? his doobage, going, going. <laughs> I'll send you to the moon, Dexter, to go get this guy. Uh, isn't there a uh, a theory that there were two murderers that were I've heard that? Yeah, there were, yeah so, there were so I, I think decks. that would be a really nice play. There. They go back <laughs> in time, they find their way back to the future and stuff, and that's what makes the their confrontation in the their final confrontation in the interrogation room. 
so beautifully simplistic. Yes. So beautifully uneventful, yeah. yet so meaningful because they've had these huge battles. They've done all the big things, and it comes down to one pen <laughs> in a small room. Uh, See, you made mention of going back to the future, and all I can hear now in my head or see in my head is Christopher <laughs> Lloyd going, Great Scott Dexter! Well, I think <laughs> you, we've got to go back to the future! I think, I think Christopher Lloyd makes an appearance on the show for a season. He comes up for a season. He gets murdered by Saxon. Of course. Of he gets course. murdered by Saxon. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what causes them to go back in time. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's great. probably my first theory. More my first theory that's, than that's the like second. That's the best one, yeah. But uh, I, really, I really hope they got the budget to do the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as Elway, uh, I think he's just a guy who comes along the way. I, he seems kind of like a bounty hunter because he's obviously yes. not an official U.S. Marshal. He's not a cop or anything like that. He right. seems more like a bounty, like a PI hunter. or something. Or, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. So I think he just comes along the way. Uh, maybe he is Rita now Hannah's ex husband. Oh, Ooh. yeah, which, and has dirt. Which would make that when he grabs her arm so uh, viciously on that bus, uh, that makes it a be. little more meaningful. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's that's my <laughs> best guess. What has happened with these characters? Uh, we still have the annoying uh, Batista. Yes, like he he's just been the same. I don't feel like he ever gets any sort of character development between. I, yeah, I felt he was the same, same depth. Yeah, 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 from one to the end. Now uh, we say that, and there's probably like a whole season. Like season six is nothing but Batista. It's all Batista, all Batista, this all is the time. time. Yeah, <laughs> he wins the world heavyweight championship right. <laughs> against Triple H, <laughs> and it goes on to you know be one small part of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, if he just stands in one place for a really long time and doesn't move, he becomes invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds about right that sounds about right sure why not? uh but yeah that's my take on what happened and my evidence why i'm not a writer uh, <laughs> how about you so what oh, do you think happened well there? i'll tell you i didn't get into quite that much detail but i do have some theories i have some theories now you and interestingly enough we do have some uh go ahead and crack it on mike we don't okay. care Crack it on Mike. You know what? We, we do need on, some refreshment. We do it on every other show. So there you go. You know, that's right. That that means that's the official um, bottle on the on the bow. There you go. Is uh, is cracking is cracking the beer. And uh, so we. Uh, uh, what, it, <laughs> I, I love your threes. That's great, man. I would watch that show. That's the thing. I would, especially the time travel and the moon thing. And, only uh, one of that. The, the whole time travel and the moon thing. That's the only thing I pre thought of. Oh, the rest of that shit, I was just like, all right, how do we hell of it. that? Yeah. So my thoughts, and we do have some interesting, uh, not a lot, but interesting similarities in some things. Excuse me. So here's how I see it. So. Debbie, because we've established that she either knows or participated in Dexter's activities, here's what I think happens. Rita's gone. I think that Dexter kills Sergeant Dokes. Okay. Okay. To protect himself. No. Ooh. No. Ooh. Although maybe to protect himself. But we know from episode one that Debbie... Deb, Deborah, whoever, however you want to say it, yeah. really wanted to be in homicide. Right. You get rid of Dokes, there's a position open in homicide. Loves his little sister, his little foster sister, so why the heck not? But, but, <laughs> as he's doing it, Deb catches him doing it. And that's Ooh. how she finds out what he's doing. So now, fast forward a season or two, they initially they they're like, what the hell? You can't be doing that shit and all that stuff and everything. <laughs> so Deb leaves the force because she knows that if she sticks around on the force, she's gonna have to give up Dexter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now Rita, this is where Rita comes in. Ooh. Deb starts developing feelings for Dexter because after all, they're fosters. Yeah. They're not actual brother and sister. 
So Deb starts Scandals. developing feel. Yeah, I know. Starts <laughs> developing feelings for Dexter. So she takes out Rita Ooh. with the same sort of uh, methodical precision that she'd learned by watching and learning about Dexter. Mm-hmm. And that eventually drives her over the edge and says, I can't, I can't be with the police department anymore. I need to check out and take some time off. Uh, the whole time, <laughs> uh, and, and, and speaking of taking time off, this is the time that Batista takes some time off. On hell, Batista. But he's kept on the show because he opens up a taco truck that parks itself out in front of the police department and they have lunch out there every day. Dexter goes to him for advice in helping solve crimes. <laughs> Amazing. I, I, so, I, so, I mean, if they're going to cliche the guy, we might as well cliche him all the way and make him an <laughs> owner of a taco truck. <laughs> I smell the spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> so now... Fast forward, and this is where our, we have a little bit of a similarity here in, in you mentioning Hannah. Turns out, Deb didn't kill her. Ooh, okay. Sent her off somewhere. She has the surgery. She yeah. gets altered. She comes back. Dexter doesn't know this, uh, that it's Rita, obviously. But in the interim, by the way, we had Dexter has to have an affair with somebody. Yeah. Has I, to get I somebody was... pregnant, and it's Deb. Uh, <laughs> even more scandalous. Even more scandalous. So uh, this is another reason thinking, why she has to leave the department. I was just thinking, like, I, I totally forgot to figure out Harrison. Yeah. 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 So Harrison is actually, despite what they show in the last episode. Well, all they call her is Aunt Deb. Right. Yeah. Right. And so... <laughs> So now, Deb is actually Harrison's mother. Wow. I know. My Hannah comes back altered. She's actually the product of a bunch of, like, medical experiments and all this stuff. You know, sort of like uh, the super soldier type thing and everything. I'm totally going Whoa. superhero thing. <laughs> okay. And Saxon, or Elway, I'm sorry, not Saxon. Elway is from whatever laboratory altered her and is chasing her to bring her back into the fold. Nice. Because she's being trained as an assassin to take out Dexter. (laughs) (laughs) And then they go to the moon and they travel to the moon. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So so then we (laughs) and isn't it somebody's gotta go to the moon. Right, yeah. Somebody damn well better go to the moon. So, I'm telling you, this is why we're not writers. So, <clears throat> but now we fast forward to the f- last episode, okay? Um, Dexter and Deb have come to terms with the fact that no one can ever know that Harrison is Deb's son. Yeah. So, they have, as you say, uh, assumed the Aunt Deb role, blah, blah, blah. Dexter eventually figures out that Hannah is actually Rita, but stronger and more, you know, because she was, she was a sort of a wilted flower in the first yeah. episode and for good reason. She's a broken woman. Yes, you're a broken woman. So, uh, by this point, uh, uh, Batista is back on the force because it turns out that Lieutenant LaGuardia, the flirtatious lieutenant and everything, okay. developed feelings for him. By visiting his taco truck out in front of the police department oh, every day, chats. right? Yeah, chats. And she talks him back into coming in, or talks him into coming back to the department because he's an <laughs> asset they can't live without. And so, you, in the last episode, when Dexter kills Saxon, and they're all sitting around in the reviewing the tape and everything, and Batista's in there, and he's like, "What are we supposed to do with this? What are we supposed to do with this?" And then he just sort of you know, supposedly bought Dexter's explanation for being in there in the first place with him and everything else. I think at this point, LaGuerta has been killed by Dexter already because they have figured out what he is. She was, despite her flirtatious ways, uh, opposed to what he was doing, which, you know, most police officers would be. Yeah. Uh, Maybe she was working with the other detective. She might have been. But Batista 
uh, figured out who Dexter is, but secretly supports what he's doing mm -hmm. because he's doling out justice. And so... A real, a real Mexican commissioner. Going right. On. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, so this is where all my theories about how the show goes just spin off into oblivion. Um, but uh, but then everything all comes together with uh, Dexter at a uh, logging camp in uh, Ark. <laughs> <laughs> As most shows do. As most shows do, right. Uh, Didn't Logan wind up at a logging camp somewhere? Uh, I'm, Wolverine, I believe he did. I'm pretty sure The Office and yeah. with Michael Scott and a logging camp somewhere. I'm pretty sure West Wing, uh, President Bartlett probably went to a, a logging camp somewhere That's in New Hampshire. Show. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Foreman, yeah. logging camp. It, right. They said he went what, to Europe, but he was really... It's what you do. That's right. It's how you write a show. <laughs> There are certain rules we don't break. Right. Uh, <laughs> so now, if you have if you have any theories at all, if you've never seen the show, we invite you to participate in this um, by offering up by first of all following the same format: watch the first episode, watch the last episode. Don't cheat and look in the middle, and and give us your own synopsis of how you or, think the series falls out or or if you have seen the entire series yeah. you're a big fan tell let us, us how far off we, we are yeah <laughs> let us know what we got right what yeah. we got wrong uh send us an email at subject yes. to change ent at gmail.com uh and maybe we'll read them off on the next episode and uh let, let that would be the awesome. people know how bad we are right <laughs> i'm pretty confident that moon thing is in there I, I'm almost sure. I'm almost yeah. sure of it. I really like the idea that Christopher Lloyd plays an entire season there as a yeah. as a time traveling mentor. I'm thinking season four. I'm thinking yeah, he's a season four regular. Yeah, I think so. I think you know that that was the. Uh, well, what is it? Usually, season seven is when series tend to jump the shark. Mm -hmm. That could very well be when it happened. And this is why season eight came around and went. You know what? Let's, let's <laughs> We're kind of done. Let's it wrap it up. Now. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> narrow it down. So we can't go. We, we don't want to go a lot further without, of course, mentioning. Um, you know what? Let's let's take a quick commercial break. Okay. Hello, friends. Sean King here. When you're done dropping a deuce, do you ever feel like your toilet paper just doesn't clean your ass as well as you'd like? Millions of people do when they do do. That's why I recommend Ripple Texture Toilet Paper. Ripple Texture Toilet Paper. It's like a washboard for your ass. And we're back. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm going right out right yeah. now. Yeah, oh, that brought up. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if and this is and this is the beauty of podcasts. If you don't recognize the, immediately the, we have no idea what that what that product was at this particular moment. Then I don't know what to do for you, but I love that. I love that. I'm that, sure uh, it's great, though. I, yeah, that that product is some, awesome. They, they gave, gave us, us some money. free product. Yeah, <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> I love that. Uh. <laughs> so just want one more time, real quick, before I forget. Uh, well, not necessarily the last time, but I just want to make sure again. Um, our new our nerd news page, sort of my comics on Facebook. Follow uh, sort of my podcast on Instagram. Be sure to check out Subject to Change Entertainment on Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube and SoundCloud. And uh, wherever you are checking this out, um, while you're here, be sure to like, comment, share, whatever you got to do. We love we love all of that, and we love the interaction. We want you to interact with us and everything. And and uh, please don't be afraid to tell us how fucked up our theories are because we don't <laughs> we don't mind that at all. That's the whole idea here is we are not writers. And I want to give a, a special shout out to Charlie Flanagan. Oh, he, yes, uh, yes. A friend of mine from work. He helped me come up with the idea for this show. He unfortunately is not able to do it with us, but uh, hopefully we'll have him on at some point. Right. So, Charlie, thank you, number one. Uh, but in Charlie's honor, we have Amic the Wonder Puppy here yeah. uh, taking his place here at the table. Been here the whole time. Yep. Uh, Fidget Sh the Cat Fidget is the also... Cat. On staff, as always. Showing our, her disapproval, as she always does. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> she's a I mean, she, she's a veteran intern of the show, and... Uh, <laughs> she's just staring at you like, why the fuck are you talking about me, human? I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you just have, like, she's got that look, like, like, you're, like you're compelled to apologize. <clears throat> so there uh, we have it. So now, we, again, this premise, watch the first episode, watch the last episode, fill in the middle. Uh, we're going to be doing this. 
but uh, well, as often as we can. Probably bi-weekly. Yeah, bi-weekly. Be Just because we're bi-weekly. Mm-hmm. We're, we're the first bi-entertainment <laughs> thing. Oh, God. No. And if you want to buy our bi-weekly it's, entertainment, that's fine, too. It's also not an official Subject to Change Entertainment program unless we say Yet. something vaguely offensive. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, be sure to check us out every other week. Uh, we're going to be doing this. Um, and we, we may change things up a little bit, but always the premise will always be, the, the underlying premise will always be the same, that one of us uh, will display our uh, innate stupidity by trying to fill in the blanks of television shows that we have never seen before. And, <laughs> uh, and, it, and we're also open to ridicule for not having seen these TV right. shows. We're fine with that. Sure. And, uh, and that's fine. That's going to do it for us today. You know, thank you so much for doing it, Vinny. Vin the human. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much for uh, for being here today. Thank this you is, for uh, hosting this. Well, you know, I I love it. You know, I love being on the microphone. And uh, for those of you that don't know uh, my history, well, that's probably the best. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for Vin the human, I'm Sean King. Thanks for tuning in to Why We're Not Writers right here on Subject to Change Entertainment. <laughs>